guys to the Alchemy Sports Performance Training Podcast. I'm Charles Schultz. This is Kyle Bobo. Good to have you back. So if this is your first time with us, thank you. If you saw the first episode and you decided to come back, double thank you because that means you liked what we're putting out there. So uh, today we're going to get a little bit more into the weeds. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the stuff that I guess goes beyond the training. So a uh, little background, I was having a lesson the other day with one of my hitting inch clients and um, her dad said, you know, you haven't trained in a while. And her comment was, well, I'm not planning on playing in college. And so one of the things that Kyle and I love about this is that whether you choose or want to play after high school, the value you get from training goes well beyond what it does for you on the field, what it does for your career and playing in college. Great. If you get to play in college, that's awesome. We, we, we want to see that. We support that. But not many kids play after high school, but the values you get and the things you learn from being in the weight room go way beyond just what it does for your performance on the field. So uh, we're going to dig into that a little bit today. So first, Kyle, when you think about the values that some of these athletes get, what's the most common thing that you notice from a kid when they come in from day one to let's say like four or five months down the road, that's a non-sports performance quality that they gain from being in here? Confidence. Oh yeah, for sure. Confidence for sure. Um, to see, especially like, uh, I mean, I guess in general, like any any type of training, whether that's you know just our our high school development or a team training aspect. Um, I think from day one to getting the kids in for you know a few weeks into months into like some kids have trained with us for years, and just getting getting to see that kid from the very first day that they come in to. Um, continuing to build on those pieces and the longevity of training and different stuff like that. And a lot of it is just putting things in front of you that um, from the beginning, you're, it's things that you don't think that you're going to be able to accomplish. And then, and then you start to stack things on top of each other and the consistency piece of training and doing things that are difficult kind of really shows each individual kid that comes in here that like I'm capable of doing a lot more than than I thought I was able to and then once once a kid starts to gain more confidence than just in general where like it's training wise or weight room wise or on the turf stuff that we would do or just in general like it, it kind of just like changes that kid just having conversations with them from day to day and them coming in and and kind of getting out of their shell more and interacting with you know, people that they may not interact with if they weren't coming to training or doing something like this. Um, obviously, team training stuff, you're working with your teammates and different stuff like that, but even so, just getting to know your teammates more, uh, being around people that you know more, you can open up to more, um, it, it really is just like night and day type of difference from what you see in kids, which is cool. Yeah, no, I think the confidence piece is an awesome one because there's such uncertainty when they come in, they're not... Right. They're not sure of their abilities. They're not sure of who they are. They don't think they can do a whole lot. And you said something really interesting is the communication piece that comes from it. Because when they become more confident, now they they feel assertive. They can right. they can speak what's going on. They 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 carry themselves with a different type of presence. Right. Um, and that obviously does translate to the field, but it goes well beyond because in life you're going to have to feel uncomfortable. You're going to have right. to do the uncertain right. things and. And this training environment gives you that confidence that even when you start to struggle, right. you can figure it out, you can work yep. through it. And I think that's one of the really cool pieces. I agree, uh, the confidence piece is awesome. Um, what do you think of the ability to learn how to fail in a place like this? I think it's great because it's controlled failing pretty much, you know? Yeah. So if you, if you fail in here, then it, it's good because it kind of teaches your, it teaches you like, okay, I can go to that place of failure. You know what I'm saying? But this is also like, if you fail in something like this, odds are you're going to get, you're going to get another attempt at it or, or um, something to that capacity. Right. Um, but it, I think it teaches you to be able to push yourself to like, when things start to get hard and things get tough, I don't want to give up on myself. I want to continue to, I want to continue to work at this and overcome the failure, um, which is great because a lot of kids, they don't want, especially at the beginning of anything like this, they don't want to go anywhere near uncomfortable, right? They, they have a very hard time of when things get uncomfortable for them, they just want to quit. So like when it gets hard, 
they're done, right? And that's not true failure. So a lot of pushing kids to do things to actual failure, I think is beneficial for obviously for sport and team team things and, and all of that, but in life in general, because there's going to be things that there's going to be things in life that come up about that are challenging or hard or make you want to quit and stop and, and all of that stuff. And if I think that if you have gone through things and overcome those hard obstacles, then okay, you, you can, you can kind of relate it to something that you have experienced before you've trained for those types of moments, whether that's in sport or in life in general, because I think that there's so much carryover between sport and life and the, the things that you're going to, to, um, overcome in life or try to overcome in life or the obstacles that you're going to face in, in life in general. Yeah, no, I, I think you said something really important there is you get to fail in a controlled environment. So yeah. you, we're teaching how to fail, right? which I think a lot of people, when you play sports, when you fail on the field, there's a, there's a consequence that's negative to the team and, and right. then it teaches you that failure is bad. Yeah. But you also said that, you know, we need to get out of our comfort zone. And, that, and I agree that there's no growth that happens there. So we can't get better if we're always doing things we already know we can do well. Right. So the stretch, that, that, the edge, as uh, Tim Kite likes to call it, is where we need to go live. And if we don't push those kids to get there and they don't learn how to fail and overcome those things, then right. when life happens where the, the, the things you're doing are new skills, yep. you're going to be bad at them. Like the first time we tried to squat, it probably wasn't pretty, right? right? But we practiced and we failed and we got better. And that's the same for all the skills that we have to develop in life. So as you move out into the world and you start to, a new job and you have to learn new skills, if you don't know how to fail and you don't know how to overcome those failures, right. then you quit and you get uncomfortable yep. and you yep. go into a shell. And, and I agree that these, these failures in here, they, they teach that ability to, well, that sucked. That was uncomfortable. Let's try again. Right. Yep. I think that, I think that if you, if you never face adversity or face any controlled fail failure in your younger years, and then once you get out into the real world, into jobs and different things like that, and if you've never experienced anything challenging or kind of get you into that uncomfortable type of feeling, um, like that, that's that's kind of I feel like where it becomes really scary. You know, it's like okay. you've never like this, like like you said, or in sport, different things like that. If you fail or something doesn't go your way, you, most of the time, you know that you, you can get a second chance at it. You can, you can try, you know, uh, a PR again, or you can try whatever exercise or movement type of thing. There's going to be repetitions and repetitions and repetitions. There's a reason behind the repetitions that you would do. Or in sport, if something doesn't go your way, next play, next, whatever it is, right? Um, if you've never experienced that or been able to kind of push yourself to or away from those things and kind of train yourself or your mind that those things are going to happen, let me move away from it. Let me, you know, basically let that go and move on to the next thing or th that sort of stuff. You get into the real world, never have it experiencing any of those things. There's a lot more on the line as far as getting into having a real job and working working with people in a job setting, most jobs that you will have or anything that you're going to want to do that has any value attached to it, you're gonna to have to work with people or you're gonna to have to understand that, you know, not everything is always gonna constantly go your way, especially, you know, running a business or anything like that, working for yourself, all of that type of stuff. And then once you have a family, then you gotta provide for those those people in your family. You have kids, you, you gotta provide for the kids. You have bills and house and car and all of this stuff. If you don't understand that, how to kind of work with those things, you're constantly going to be struggling, I think, and running away from the problems that will, that will kind of arise. So like, I think that this stuff, as much as as much as we do this to make athletes better at their sports, as far as the training and the develop, develop, developmental pieces, I think a lot of it, especially for us and our focus, is trying to help these young athletes be better people in the long run. Because yeah. eventually, regardless, even if you go on to play professional sports, you're only going to play for so long. And then the, you still have the rest of your life to try and figure out and do something of value hopefully with the rest of the time that you do have um 
because I think a lot of this goes beyond the short amount of time that you will play sports and then you have the rest of your life to hopefully do something that provides those challenges and different things like that to do something of value with your life. Yeah. No, there's only there's only one Tom Brady playing into his mid forties. Right. That doesn't happen very often. Right. Most people, if you make it to your thirties in professional sports, you've had a really good career. Right. But that means you have more than half your life left. Yes. And I'm I'm thankful for my learning of how to fail because if we were to list all the things we failed at in this business up to this point, we'd have a whole episode. Yep. Uh, so, but the ability to learn from those mistakes, the ability to adapt from those mistakes helps us stay afloat, helps us keep working, helps us build. Yeah. And that's why we're still here. Yep. So, um, you know, the cliche word I want to dig into next is you, you hear all the time is mental toughness. Mm -hmm. And I, I think mental toughness has a lot of different meanings, but one of the things I love about a place like this is it, I think it develops that. So in your experience, what are some of the things that you learn about yourself through the challenges in here that can relate to the mental toughness side of life and sports and those? Uh, I mean, kind of some of the things that we've talked about already. Um, it's a discipline type of thing to one, just show up every day when you're supposed to be here, right? Um, to show up on time for training sessions or for workouts or whatever it is, right? Um, that's a discipline. Um, it would be easy to just kind of, you know, when you're not feeling it, um, I'm just, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to go today or I'm not going to, I'm not going to train today or I don't want to work out today, different stuff like that. Right. Um, that, that is another piece I feel like that kind of hones in on the mental toughness side. Right. So when you, when you're tired, when you don't feel like it, those sorts of things, it's, the whole discipline thing and, and kind of digging in and being like, you know what, I, I'm not going to skip today because I, I, I want to I make sure that I'm doing what I need to do to get better, right? Especially when you're talking about a team setting and different things like that. Like you're doing this for more, more than just yourself. You're doing this for a bigger, a bigger thing than just you, right? For your teammates, for the team, all of that, right? Everyone's kind of relying on you. Um, I think just showing up every day and putting in good work that actually is like, I, I want to get better, right? Not I'm here because I have to be here because my coaches wanted me to sign up for this or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Just kind of moving through, through the steps to just get the workout done. I think those types of things speak to mental toughness in general. Um, doing the things that you, that you don't think that you would be good at or kind of facing, facing those fears is like, oh, I'm not, I can't do that. And then one of us or your teammates or whoever it is being like, you, like you can do this, you know what I'm saying? Um, and then seeing kids kind of overcome those things, I think that makes them tougher. And I think that, that that shows them that kind of, you know, to believe in themselves a little bit more. So when I'm faced with something that I'm unsure of, I can kind of fall back on these things that I've experienced before. I think that helps doing things to failure and really pushing yourself um, when things get uncomfortable and things start to, to kind of hurt more or less, I guess, you know, it would be easy for you to just kind of quit like, oh, that's uncomfortable. I don't really want to go there, you know, versus pushing past that, that discomfort zone. And, and I think that that speaks to mental toughness and, and all of those things, you know, in a, in a controlled setting, I think that we do, I think that we do a good job of showing kids those things, right. But also giving them value within their training that actually develops the athlete instead of just running kids into the dirt or just kind of constantly just breaking them down, breaking them down, breaking them down, yelling and screaming and, and that sort of thing. And I think that there's a difference in what you see as mental toughness training and like actual true athletic development training. Um, because they're, I've seen kids come in from day one and turn into a completely different person from, you know, week, whatever it is, if we do an eight week block with the team. Um, but there's very few kids that will throw up in a, in a training session in here. There's very few kids that we are pushing and pushing and pushing, you know, because that's just not really our style. I think that kids can, can improve mentally and go through some tough things and overcome those things, but not have to be, run into the ground and talk down to or treated poorly and different stuff like that because then I think that that 
there's going to be some kids that sure could may you know they maybe come out on the other side of that and they they feel like they're stronger and maybe that's the way that they need to be coached or trained or something like that i but i also think in the same sense you're doing those kids a lot more of a disservice because as they get older i think that they're going to equate working out and training to those types of days and then i think it has this kind of negative connotation to working out and training and then once you see younger athletes get into like we talked about the rest of their lives um they have they have a negative approach or feeling towards working out and training where it could be this is supposed to be a tool that's supposed to help you throughout the rest of your life so you know i'm 29 years old now and still train, you know, four or five days a week, whatever it might be. Um, just because it, it's a discipline, it's something that there's days when, you know, we don't want to work out or we don't want to train or we don't want to do this, don't want to do that. It would be easy for us to just kind of leave, right? But it's kind of that discipline thing and, and kind of, you know, still to this day, wanting to challenge ourselves and get better and different stuff like that. If we had a bunch of people, when we were younger, you know, yelling and screaming and, and, kind of belittling us or making us feel like less than or just pushing us to like an unrealistic type of place for you know more like conditioning purposes or whatever that doesn't really help us I think that now we probably wouldn't be doing what we're doing and we wouldn't be still training at the age that we are at yeah. so now I, I think you touched on a few really important points that I want to go a little deeper into the first one is you mentioned the um, the discipline side of it. Right. And I think that that's an important piece of all this is that mental toughness is the discipline to do hard things when you don't want to. Right. Right. It's not just being slammed to the earth and getting back up. That's, that's not what we're trying to do here. The mental toughness goes well beyond just being screamed at and belittled and then still being tough in that, the face of right. that adversity. Right. Um, the discipline to do all your reps, the discipline to show up on time, the discipline to stay until your workout's done, the discipline yep. to do it every day. Yep. That's mentally taxing, that's hard because there's gonna be many days where you don't want to do those things or it's going to be hard and you're like, man, six sounds great, but it says eight to 10. Yep. And the discipline to do those things makes you mentally tougher. Right. The ability to work hard to accomplish a goal when you mentally are telling yourself you don't want to, Right and the follow through anyway makes you mentally tougher and i think that's a really cool aspect of this is that you learn that you can teach that you can develop that um the other one i really want to dig into is the fear side of it because you you said that you know when you're faced with something that's uncomfortable or unknown you have this fear that i can't do this yep. and it's one of our least favorite phrases i can't do that but that's the fear speaking and the interesting thing about this is that no matter who you are or what you do and where you go, you're going to face fear in life. Yep. And if you're used to backing down to fear, you're going to stop accomplishing really cool things. Yep. And in here, if you start to learn that, you know, that might be hard, but I'll try. Yep. And you face those fears and that discomfort over time, you create this ability to see fear for what it is. Okay. Acknowledge it. Yep. That's going to be hard. That's going to be scary. I don't know if I can do it, but let's see what happens. Yes. And, you, you create this ability to then face those fears, go forward, attack them, and the outcome may not be what you want, but you're not going to back away from things that are unknown or scary right. or dis discomforting. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I, I, would, I would also say uh, a lot of that is now obviously depending on what what it is that you're that you're talking about, right? We're talking about kind of overcoming obstacles and, and doing challenging things right? right i think a lot of it is a mindset thing so if you if you are looking at something that is a huge goal or something you know something that you're trying to achieve right i think that if you constantly tell yourself like that's not doable or i can't do that the same way within here right it's not always a lot a lot of it is going to be a mindset thing right a kid is telling themselves that they can't do that even before they even try right like that's one thing that i'm just like I can't do that, right? So like, I'm not asking you for it to be perfect or for it to be done absolutely correct, but I'm asking you to give your best effort towards whatever it is, right? And if you're going towards a lot of these goals or trying to overcome some big things or you know obstacles coming in your way, you don't necessarily always have to hit those things perfectly right on the head, right? If we did everything perfect in here, 
we would probably be a lot further along in in our business and our career and, and that sort of thing. Um, but but in the same sense, we wouldn't have faced those adversities, and we probably wouldn't we wouldn't be getting or going to the places that we're trying to go because I think with a little bit of adversity, it kind of really shows you how to work through things, how to question things, and and. and it shows you, you know, like, okay, that was hard, that was challenging, but I did it. You know what I'm saying? And I think that that kind of creates that hunger to want more and more and more, right? Um, so I think that a lot of it is just, it's a mindset type of thing that I don't want to see kids have, right? Because I think that, yeah, a lot of things in life are challenging. Um, but if you just constantly told yourself that you couldn't do any of those things, then I think that you are going to be passed up by the other people that are telling themselves that they can. And that would be unfortunate for what you're trying to achieve because I think that it is achievable. A lot of it just comes down to whether you're going to tell yourself that you can do it or this person over here that's going to end up achieving it before you. They're telling themselves the entire time that, that they can do it while you were doubting yourself or telling yourself that you can't. And then you see other people doing the same things that you were trying to get accomplished. What makes you different than, than them? Yeah. No, um, that sort of stuff. I agree. I, th I think the hardest thing is this, this common mindset that we see that I can't do that before I tried it. Right. Like, if you don't even attempt it, how do you know you can't do it? Right. And, and getting people to, to come out of that Yep. that mindset, that thought right. process I, that I think you're already setting yourself. You're, you're telling yourself already, you know, like if you keep, if you tell yourself that you can't do it because you've never tried it before, right. you're not going to, you're not going to do it. Right. You've already, it's already, that, it's that already, it becomes right. a self-fulfilling prophecy. Exactly. You're already yeah. telling yourself that you can't odds are probably it's not going to happen. Right. So, and, and I also like the idea that, you know, these adversities that you face teach you how and when to pivot, where to, where to adjust, what, what to change next. Yep. And, and you know, yeah, you may not do it well, but without not doing it well, you don't get better, right? You don't get those improvement points. Right. I think so. a, a lot of kids, is, they, they think that they have to be perfect, right? Yeah. Which that goes back to sports in some aspects, right? Um, the failure piece I guess, at practice. Right. And not but I, th able. I think that there's a lot of, there's a lot of pressure put on kids to have to do things perfect, depending on how coaches coach, right? If you're a big um, mental toughness type of coach, right, odds are that you're a kind of a push, pushing the kid, people. yeah, <laughs> pushing the kids to be perfect. And if they make a mistake, then you're putting too much on on the kids, right? Because I don't think that one, no one in life is perfect. Two, no athlete has ever been perfect. Um, I think that if you put pressure, pressure on kids to think that they have to be perfect, they're going to be timid and afraid and they're not gonna have any confidence in themselves because if they mess up, then it, it's the end of the world, right? Instead of coaching a kid and telling them, hey, here's kind of what you messed up on, here's kind of what we're looking for, and odds are, most of the time the kid already knows what they did wrong, right? They don't need someone screaming over top of them and telling them that that's not how it's supposed to be done. You can't do that, different stuff like that. I think um, that kind of makes, makes for almost a timid kid with no confidence and doesn't really truly believe in themselves or you know that sort of thing they're they're not they're not willing they're not willing to try that stuff because they're afraid that they're going to mess something up okay. and for whatever reason they think that they have to be perfect yeah and i think that honestly it, it, it's unfortunate because yeah. i don't think that young kids especially you know talking young young kids i see some i see some young young kids that are just supposed to be having fun within sport and being kids and running around and it should be carefree and be they should be able to enjoy it. I see a lot of them having way too much pressure to, to have to feel like they have to be perfect right. because of the way that they are coached or whatever it might be. Um, and, and I think that it, it's kind of messing up. It can mess up a kid's mindset or their, you know, um, their mentality to be eager to try new stuff because they they feel like if they can't do it perfectly then people are going to judge them or yell at them or scream at them and basically tell them that you know they're once again kind of that belittlement type of talk or something yeah. like that you know i think that that is discouraging kids from 
pushing themselves to want to do new things because there's like, I've never done this before. I know that I'm going to mess it up, so I can't do that. Yeah. And I'm just like, to some sort of capacity, you can accomplish this goal that I'm trying to put in front of you. Right. If I didn't think that you couldn't do it, then it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be in front of you to try. You know what I'm saying? And then the, once again, going back to like, this is a repetitions type of thing. This is a great place for getting reps and, and cr like, you know, we're developing overall everything that we're trying to do and we're not expecting like, okay, as soon as we do this, it has to be perfect right? because we have time. We have repetitions. We have second chances that we can continue to try this exercise. It doesn't need to be perfect. If everything that you did when you came in here, you did it perfectly, then I don't, I, you don't need me to, to help you with anything. You should be, you should be coaching or, or training someone else because yeah. you're, way too good at everything, right? And you already have all of this down pat. So I think that the, this, this type of setting and this type of place needs to kind of have that type of feeling, in my opinion, at least, so. Yeah, no, I, I think you had a point too with the, um, you know, kids know when they make a mistake, you don't need to tell them. And right. I always come back to this, uh, this analogy is, you know, as a baseball guy, pitcher struggling to throw strikes in from the sideline, you hear, throw strikes! It's right. like, oh. Exactly. I knew I yeah. forgot. Yeah. I knew I was yeah. supposed to be doing as something, if, or like right. field the ball. Oh, as if as if I wasn't already trying to do right. that. You like, know what I'm saying? You know, I think that if you like, right, if you coach the kid the <laughs> correct things to do in the sport and the situations and different things like that, then I think that the coach should have the confidence in the kid, and the kid should have the confidence in the coach, and the the kid should know what to do. The coach should should trust that the kid is going to know what to do because. You're the one who taught them how to do that, or you're the one that taught them that scenario, that situation, what to do here, you know, all of that stuff. I think that your coaching should, your coaching should be dictated towards those types of things and the sport to play and what what position the kid is playing or or whatever it might be, you know, the game situation, situational type of stuff, not just constantly screaming and telling the kid this, this, and this, and then the kid is just like, he's afraid to make a mistake or any, fall, any false move at all. It's just like, these kids are just like frozen in place, afraid to do anything. Yep. I feel like odds are you're increasing the chances that the kid is gonna mess up because he's just like, oh, I, can't, I can't do this, I can't do that. You know, coaches, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, I don't really know what to do. There's just a mental battle going on inside of their head. And it, once it becomes that type of situation, the kid just can't trust themselves and be free and, and play, especially, I, I really don't like to see it at like young, young age. Oh, yeah, That's sure. wild to me. And then I think that it, it's setting those kids up early to, to have those types of issues when they get into, you know, middle school, junior high, high school, and if they have a chance to go beyond. But I think it's, it, it's kind of creating that type of athlete that's yeah. afraid to do certain things, that's afraid to try new things because of kind of where their mental state is at because of those certain situations. Yeah. And your ability to be creative on the field is ultimately going to give you an advantage. Like if you look right. at the really good athletes, they do things fluidly, creatively to create opportunities for themselves. Right. They have this ability to- uh, Some little technical difficulties today. I guess we're, uh, we're working through our failure moments. So that's kind of what we were talking about. Yeah, so. be easy on us. This is just our second time. We you know, had a little mix up. <laughs> yeah, so the, uh, the camera shut off mid question. So we're gonna, we're gonna run this back real quick and finish up. Uh, if you're still here after 30 minutes, here's the final bit. Appreciate so, you. Yeah, appreciate you. Um, so we were talking about, you know, athletes training in here and the benefits beyond yeah. sports and beyond on the field. And, you know, what, what do we tell a kid that they're, they're in here, they're, they want to do some training, they're thinking about it, but they're looking at this and they're like, I don't is it worth the investment to do this stuff if I have no aspirations to play in college? Yeah. What's, what's the way we go with that? How do you get them involved? What's the thoughts? Well, first of all, I would say that before the camera cut off, I think that we had the perfect, uh, the perfect, <laughs> the perfect answer to this question um but i think that a lot of what we talked about in this episode um kind of still can can uh, benefit those kids you know coming in here um it, it teaches them that sense of discipline right uh coming in and doing the training or doing what it is that they committed to um even when they don't feel like it right this is a commitment regardless of how you look at it um and a lot of your commitments are going to be 
they're going to be asked of you even when you don't feel like doing them. You know, um, it's going to teach you responsibility. It's going to teach you time management. It's going to teach you um, doing some hard things and kind of overcoming those obstacles. Uh, I think will 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 help you in life in general. I think that those are all beneficial pieces. Um, another thing that I would say to a kid or a parent um, is that I really think that it is our goal to uh, to focus more so on the human before the athlete, right? So I think that a lot of what we're trying to get accomplished here is just making making people better at life and being humans and being people. Um, obviously, we are training kids for their athletic development pieces and different things like that, but I think that it's it's at least a big goal of mine to help those kids become better humans more so than a better athlete because I think that um, like we talked about your athletics is only going to take you so far right so what are you going to do with the rest of your life that you do have after your athletic career is over even even if you're a kid that really has big aspirations to to go to college and play or you want to go to play a professional sport or whatever it might be um, you're only going to play that sport for so long and then what are you going to do after that? I think that the training that you do at the younger age and kind of setting your life up for 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 uh, the rest of your life, more or less, um, is beneficial in, in those types of pieces. Yeah, yeah, and no matter who you are, whether your career ends after high school, after college, after a little bit of time in the pros, it will end. Sports, right. sports careers end. And the lessons you learn in here, the lifestyle adjustments to being healthy beyond sports right. um, goes forever. That's yep. something that you can take with you. And that's the value of being a part of this is that, you know, we don't care, but not necessarily, we don't, we don't care about your on-field success. We want right. you to be successful, but that's not who you are. That's not what we right. care about. Right. What we care about is your life success. Yes. And if we can get you to learn how to fail, learn to be disciplined, learn to face your fears, learn to, to face adversity head on. Right. We're going to set you up to be a leader in the community, to be a good husband, be a good, good mom, dad, whatever right. it may right. be. You're going to be somebody in a position where you can succeed. Yeah. Um, and, and the health aspect of it, I still come back to that because, you know, I know you know plenty of athletes who, when their their careers ended. They didn't want to work out anymore because right. of the way they were treated prior to it and they didn't learn the value of it and then they they stop and they get unhealthy. Yep. That's tragic because if you play at college, you're elite. Yep. If human performance wise, you are elite. Yep. If you play professionally, you're even more elite. Yep. You should be a beacon of health and fitness. Yes. I, I think I think to add to that, I think that um, because that is such like an elite level status, like it, it is something that so many people want to do mm -hmm. is play in college regardless, right? And I think that the elite people are those that get to experience that and have that regardless of any level that you go and play college sport. Like there's so many people that want to do that, but they're not willing to do the things that it may take in order to get to that level, right? And I think that those people, especially the ones who do go to college, you have already worked and done so much of all of this type of training that we're talking about or all of this stuff to set your life up for this. And then your sports career ends or you finish with college and a lot, like a lot of times you see people that don't carry on those values for whatever reason. I don't, maybe because it, it, it hasn't been, it hasn't been kind of discussed with them as far as like, you know, really, I guess how this stuff can translate and help you in life um, or, or just because everyone is only preaching and pushing and talking to these kids about athletics and college and, and that sort of stuff. And like, here's the main goal of what we want to get accomplished. And then you get that accomplished and then you're just like, now what, you know? And I think that a lot of people are only caring or talking about the athletic side of things where I want the kids to go to college, you know what I'm saying? And it's great and like that's a goal of ours obviously because that's the kids' goals. Um, and I think that more important than that is having those discussions with the kids about life in general and setting setting life up for success, right? And, and pursuing whatever it is that they want to pursue 
after sports or after college and continuing on that path. Um, and I, w I and I think that doing these things at an early age and kind of creating those healthy habits and, and leading a life that is at least challenging yourself or wanting to kind of get to stay in a routine of health and wellness and that, and that sort of thing, um, I think is beneficial. Like I said before, um, I don't know of too many people that you would look at and be like, that person is successful in what they do that don't have some sort of health and wellness regimen or routine or something that, that they, that, that they do on a consistent basis and that sort of stuff. So, yeah, because at the end of the day, it's, it comes back to can we build you into a healthier, better human? Right. Not just what you do on the field, because seven percent of all high school athletes get the opportunity to play college. That means ninety-three percent of careers end at high school. Right. That's a lot of careers. Right. So, if your your goal is to play in college, great, come train with us. If you don't have any aspirations to play in college, this is still an environment yes. you can you can thrive in, you can yep. learn in, you can grow in. And it will make your high school experience more fun because you'll be better. And it will make your life a little bit better overall because you're going to learn some skills along the way. Yeah, so, but, um, but, yeah, that's it for today, guys. Um, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Tune in next week so you can see what we got going on. Leave a comment below on something that maybe you want us to touch on because we're open to answering some of your questions and going down some different paths if there's some things that you want to see and kind of get involved in. So, um before we sign off, Kyle, you got anything to leave them with? Um, once again, I had the perfect answer for this question the first time that we recorded this. Um, I, w I would like to, I guess, reiterate the fact that um, for us and what we are trying to do, um, obviously we are an athletic development facility, right? We work with athletes to be better athletes. But I think the big goal for us um, I guess I, me specifically, I'm sure that you are in line with this as well, um, is that we, we want to work on making kids better people before the athlete, right? Or more importantly, so, right? I think that we are trying to find the perfect way to combine both pieces, right? And we, we care about the athlete um, as a person more than the athlete itself. Um, I guess I would... I would also kind of like to touch on the point uh, or the fact of um, all of this stuff that we're talking about, life after athletics and different stuff like that, I think kind of comes full circle to the fact that you aren't the sport that you play, right? Or you should not identify yourself as the sport that it is that you play. Because I have seen firsthand a lot of people finish with a athletic career, whether that be high school or college. Um, and you know they don't make it to the professional league that they're trying to make it to or even if they do make it to the professional league there's a lot of people that identify themselves so much with the sport that it is that they play that they have nothing after that sport is over and i i i think that it should be more so a goal of just everyone in general to let kids know that they are more than a football player or they're more than a basketball player or a soccer player or whatever it is um that sport is just something that they do. That sport is hopefully going to be a catalyst to take them to places that they want to go overall in life. Um, I think that that is the important piece, is that letting kids know that they have an identity outside of the sport and that they are more than, than that sport. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's really it. Yeah. So, yeah, remember guys, sport is what you play, not who you are. You are much more than the athlete that is in front of us. You are a human being that's going to provide to this world well beyond the sports career that you have. So um, thank you guys for tuning in for the Alchemy Sports Performance Podcast. Make sure you check in next week to see what we got going on. See ya. See you guys.